Questions 11 through 20 on the 2020 Grade 8 AMC 8. After school, Maya and Naomi headed to the beach six miles away. Maya decided to bike while Naomi took a bus. The graph shows their journeys indicating the time and speed traveled. What was the difference in miles per hour between Naomi's and Maya's average speeds? So speed is equal to distance over time. So let's calculate the speed for Naomi and Maya. So for Naomi, that would be the distance, which looks like 6. And the time is 10 minutes, which would be 1 over 6, because we have to do this in hours. So this is 36 miles per hour. For Maya, her distance is also 6. But her time looks like 30 minutes, which is half an hour. And this is 12 miles per hour. So the difference in their speeds is 36 minus 12, which is 24. So number 11, the answer is E. For a positive integer, the factorial notation n factorial represents the product of the integers from n to 1. For example, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. What value of n satisfies the following equation? 5 factorial times 9 factorial is equal to 12 times n factorial. Okay, well, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then we have this 9 factorial sitting there. So let's see what we can do. If I take the 5 and I take the 4, that will give me 20. Okay, I don't know if that will help. How about if I take the 5 and the 2? That would actually give me 10. And if I take that 10 and then combine it with the 9 factorial, that actually gives me 10 factorial. All right? And then don't forget that 4 and the 3. That's uh, 12. So I just rearranged it to get into this format. So let's go back and write what we had on the other side. 12 times n factorial. Well, the 12s cancel from both sides, so 10 factorial is equal to n factorial. And that must mean that n is equal to 10. So number 12, the answer is A. Jamal has a drawer containing 6 green socks, 18 purple socks, and 12 orange socks. After adding more purple socks, Jamal noticed that there is now a 60% chance that a sock randomly selected from the drawer is purple. How many purple socks did Jamal add? Well, initially there was 6 green, 18 purple, and 12 orange. So we are going to add a certain number of purple. I'll say that's X. And then what happens is when you take the percentage of the number of purple socks over the total, which would be 6 plus 18 plus X plus 12, that is going to be exactly 60%, which is 0 0.6. So cross multiply and you get 18 plus x is equal to 0 0.6 times 36 plus x. So that's going to be x plus 21.6. And this is x, 0.6x, sorry. And this will be x plus 18. So that means 0.4x is equal to 21.6 minus 18, which is 3.6. And therefore, x, when you divide through by 0.4, is 9. So he added 9 purple socks. So number 13, the answer is B. There are 20 cities in the county of Newton. Their populations are shown in the bar chart below. The average population of all cities is indicated by the horizontal dashed line. Which of the following is closest to the population of all 20 cities? Well, the average is right here, so we just have to take the average and then multiply by 20 cities, and that will give me the total. Well, let's look at this. This is 4,000. This is 6,000. There's one, two, three, four bars between each 2,000. So that means 2,000 divided by 4 is 500 so it looks like it's going up by 500 so this is 4,500 this is 5,000 that dashed line looks like it's right between those two 
So it looks like that would be 4,750. That would be the average, approximately. So take that average and multiply by 20. And when you do, you get 95,000. So number 14, the answer is D. Suppose 15% of x equals 20% of y. What percentage of x is y? So 0.15x is equal to 0.2y. Top, uh, let's see here, multiply through by 5. That would give me 0.75x is equal to just y. And that gives us what we're looking for. What percentage of x is y? Well, obviously 75%. So number 15, the answer is C. Each of the points A, B, C, D, E, F in the figure below represents a different digit from 1 to 6. Each of the five lines shown passes through some of the points. The digits along each line are added to produce five sum, sums, one for each line. The total of the five sums is 47. What is the digit represented by B? Okay, that line is A plus B plus C. This line is B plus D. This line is A plus F plus E. This is B plus F. And then this one is C plus D plus E. And all of those equal 47. So add this all up and we get 2A uh, plus 3B plus 2C plus 2D plus 2E plus 2F is equal to 47. And then I guess I can factor this A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F and then I'll have a lone B and then 47. Now A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F is just the sum of the digits from 1 to 6. So the sum of the digits from 1 to 6 even if we don't know the order like which is 1, which is 2, it doesn't matter. The sum will be the same and that sum is 21. So this is 21, so it's really just 2 times 21 plus b is equal to 47. And when you solve for this, you get b is equal to 5. Number 16, the answer is e. How many factors of 2020 have more than 3 factors? As an example, 12 has 6 factors, namely 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. Well, the first thing I want to do is figure out how many divisors are there in 2020, and you do that by first breaking it up into its prime factors. 2020 is 2 times 2 times 5 times 101. So we have 2 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 1 times 101 to the power of 1. And that means the number of divisors, you take this and you add 1. Then you take this exponent and you add 1. Then you take this exponent and you add 1 and then you multiply them. So that's 3 times 2 times 2 which is 12. So there's 12 divisors, and 12 is not that many, so I can list them. Sometimes it's a lot, so it's better to just figure out the number of divisors. Since there's only 12, let's just list them all. Let's see here. There's 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 20, 101, 202, 404, 505 and a uh, zero, zero, a one zero one zero and two zero two zero. So is that 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Okay. So those are the 12 divisors. Now we have to figure out how many of these have uh, more than three factors. Okay. So number of factors. Well, one only has one factor. So that's 1. 2 has 2 factors, because 2 to the power of 1. 3 has just 2 factors. 2, um, let's see here, 5 is next. 5 has only 2 factors. 10 is t actually 2 times 5, so that's going to have uh, 2 times 2, 4 factors. The same principle I used here. You would take this, add 1, this, add 1, and then multiply them. That's how I got the 4. 20 is 2 to the power of 2 times 5, so that's going to be 3 times 2, which is 6 factors. 
one and one is just a prime number, so that's just going to be two factors, one in itself. 202, that's 2 times 101, so that's going to be four factors. 404 is 2 squared times 101, so that's going to be six factors. 505 is 5 times 101, so that's going to be uh, four factors. 1010 is 2 times 5 times 101, which is going to be 8 factors. 2020 is the whole thing, and I just did that. That's 12 factors. So I've got to figure out how many have more than 3. More than 3 would be one, this guy, this guy, this, 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 and this. So how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them. 7 is the answer to problem number 17, which is B. Rectangle ABCD is inscribed in a semicircle with diameter FE, as shown. DA is 16, FD is equal to AE is equal to 9. What is the area of ABCD? Well, I'm going to draw the center, and then from the center, I'm going to draw a line to B. And that line represents the radius. And because it represents the radius, we can figure out the dimensions. Now, this is the center right here, so that chops this line into half, so 8 on each side, so this is 8 from here to here. And then the radius would therefore be from there to there, so the radius of that would be 8 plus 9, which is 17. So since this is the radius also, this line, that's also 17. So now we have a little Pythagorean relationship. 8 squared plus BA squared is equal to 17 squared. And when you solve for this, you get BA squared is equal to 225, and therefore BA is equal to 15. So that is 15. So the dimensions of that would be 15 times 16, and that is 240. So number 18, the answer is A. A number is called flippy if its digits alternate between two distinct digits. For example, 2020 and 37373 are flippy, but 3883 and 123123 are not. How many five-digit flippy numbers are divisible by 15? Well, we have a five-digit number. If it's divisible by 15, the last digit must be either a 0 or a 5. Okay, let's start with 0. So we're going to have 0, and then some number, and then 0, then some number, then 0. Okay, but the problem is if that first uh, digit is a 0, it's no longer a 5-digit number. So that would not work. That would be a bust. So that means this is the only scenario where the last digit is 5. So we're going to have 5, and then some number, 5, and then some number, and then 5. Okay, for that number, that n can be anything from 0 to 9, except 5, because if it's 5, then it'll be all 5s. So we can make a list, 5, 0, 5, 0, 5, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, and so on, right? So these are the possible numbers. Now this one right here is immediately eliminated because that's not flippy. That's just a string of fives. Now I have to figure out how many of these are divisible by 15. And when you do that, you'll figure out it's this one, this one. It's every third, third one, I think this one and this one. Yeah, it's every third one. So there's four of them that are divisible by 15 in that list. So number 19, the answer is B. A, scientists walking through a forest recorded as integers the heights of five trees standing in a row. She observed that each tree was either twice as tall or half as tall as the one to its right. Unfortunately, some of her data was lost when rain fell on her notebook. Her notes are shown below with blanks indicating the missing numbers. Based on her observations, the scientist was able to reconstruct the lost data. What was the average height of the trees in meters? Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and the average is something 0.2. So that means that if you take a number and divide by five, right, because you would have to, to get the average, you have to add them all and divide by five, obviously. And if the result is something 0.2, so something point two, 
then that means that this number here on the top has to be either ending in a 1 or a 6. That's the only way you're going to get a 0 0.2. So the sum of the heights of the trees must end in either a 1 or a 6. Now, when you use the information in the question stem, everything is some multiple of 11. It's either half of 11 or double of 11 or so on. So that makes me think that the total sum is a multiple of 11. So what multiples of 11 have an ending with 1 or 6? Well, only 66 and 121. So that 121, it's large enough that I can pretty quickly figure this out. This one is set as 11, right? So every other tree is either double that or half of that. So this, I'll make it double. This one, I'll say is double. And then this is, say, double of the one before it. And this is half. If I do that, I get a sum of 121. You just have to fiddle around with this, really. That's all it is. And this basically does become 121 over 5. And that does indeed give you 24.2. So like I said, it, a lot of it is just trial and error and trying to get this to match. So number 20, the answer is B.